This is Lucy Malenke from the James Madison University Writing Center, and today I'm going to talk to you about some of the resources you can use to write papers in APA style. But before we delve into those resources, let's review what APA style is. Every academic discipline has its own set of rules and guidelines for writing. This ensures that scholars and researchers communicate with each other in a clear, consistent, and efficient way. APA style, which the American Psychological Association developed in 1929, is widely used today in the behavioral, health, and social sciences, such as psychology, sociology, anthropology, public health, and nursing. You may be aware that APA style includes guidelines for citing references, but did you know that it also covers formatting elements, structure and organization, style and tone, how to present numbers, how to construct tables and figures, and even how to reduce bias in your writing? Think of it as a comprehensive set of rules for the road for writing about research. When you use APA style, you show your readers that you are a responsible researcher and a capable communicator. Learning APA style will help you appropriately reference outside sources, write clearly and concisely, and position your ideas within a broader scholarly context skills that signal your professionalism and credibility. So where do you start if you've been asked to write a paper using APA style? The good news is that no one expects you to memorize every single style rule. But you do need to have a general sense of what APA guidelines cover, for instance, creating a reference list or designing a table. From there, you can use a number of APA style resources to figure out the details. The five major resources I'm going to show you today are the sixth edition of the APA Publication Manual, Purdue OWL's APA Central website, the APA Style blog, a handful of tools that will help you build, check, and manage citations, and the University Writing Center link library. The Publication Manual of the American Psychological Association is the authority on all things APA. It's updated periodically, and the most current version is the sixth edition. The manual is only available in hard copy, so if you're going to be writing an APA style a lot, you may want to consider buying it. At the very least, go to the library and give it a good skim. That way, you'll know where to find it and how to use it. This slide shows you a list of JMU library locations where you can find the APA publication manual. I recommend starting by reviewing the publication manual's table of contents you might make some interesting discoveries, like the fact that some numbers are supposed to be expressed in numerals, and others are supposed to be written as words. You'll also see that the manual gives tips for writing with precision and clarity, it reviews the rules of grammar and mechanics, and it explains how to talk about sensitive topics like gender, race, and disability in a non-biased way. Browsing the manual, you'll see that there are sample papers starting on page 41, that show you how to format and structure a report. I'm personally a big fan of page 177, which has a really handy table with examples of in-text citations. You'll probably refer to chapter 7 of the manual a lot, as it shows you how to create entries for your reference list. And if you ever have trouble finding what you're looking for, for instance, if you wanted to know how many characters a running head is allowed to have, just look up the topic in the index at the back of the manual. Though the publication manual is the most comprehensive and reliable source of information on APA style, there are some easy-to-access online resources that also may be helpful. Purdue University's online writing lab, called the Purdue OWL, has a fairly comprehensive guide to APA style. Google might be the fastest way to get to the guide, or you can bookmark the link on this slide. Let's take a look. If you're new to APA style, you might want to start with the APA overview and workshop, but the formatting and style guide is the place to go if you want help with formatting, in-text citations, or your reference list. So let's go there. Let's say you want to create an in-text citation for a scholarly article that has four authors. So we'd look in this left-hand column and we'd choose in-text citations, author or authors. And we see right over here an example of how to cite a work by three to five authors. 
Now I do want to point out this APA Stylistics Basics tab. This includes information on one of the more recent updates to APA Style. Traditionally, research writing was composed entirely in the third person. Writers would refer to themselves as the researchers, or use passive voice to avoid self-reference. Today, APA encourages authors to use the first person pronouns I, or we, to talk about themselves, and to use active voice. So instead of saying, the data was analyzed, nowadays a group of researchers might write, we analyzed the data. This change has caught on more quickly in some disciplines than in others, so be sure to ask your professors whether they want you to follow the most recent APA guidelines on point of view, or to use the more traditional third person. If you'd like to look at a sample paper, you can find one here too. Just like the sample paper in the APA publication manual, the sample paper is annotated to describe the different formatting options. Another excellent resource for information is the APA style blog. The last edition of the APA publication manual was published in 2009. So this is the place to go for the most up-to-date information, especially if you're using relatively new technologies like Twitter or Facebook as sources. Let's take a look. So we see the most recent blog post is on how to avoid wordiness. That's useful to us all, I'm sure. But if there's something in particular that you're looking for, there's a list of topics over here on the right-hand side, and you can also use the search tool. The APA style blog is also a great place to resolve those weird questions that no one seems to know the answer to, like, how do you cite a course packet? One of my favorite posts can be found down here, how to handle missing information. So if you have a source and you can't find any information on who the author is, or if there's no title, or even if the date is missing, this post tells you exactly how to cite that source appropriately. Figuring out how to cite new technologies, like Twitter, may be tricky, but technology is making it easier than ever to cite your sources. Many databases will automatically generate citations for you. I'm going to show you one example. This is the CINAHL database for nursing, and I've pulled up an article written by some of our very own at JMU prolonging the life of a patient's IV, an integrative review of intravenous securement devices. We notice that over here on the right-hand column, there's a cite option. And if you click on it, you'll see the APA citation right here. There are also quite a few free websites that will help you assemble your citations. Some of my favorites are bibme.org or citationmachine.net. Let's take a look at bibme.org. Here, you'll have the option to choose what kind of citation you're trying to construct. In this case, we'll go with APA. And you have the option to either manually enter the separate pieces of the citation right here, or there's also a really handy autofill mode that you can use for some sources. So let's say you want to cite a journal article that you found on a database and it's called Evaluating a Patient's Request for Life Prolonging Treatment. You'll first need to select the correct type of source, in this case a journal article, and then you can enter the title. And voila, we see our source right here. So we'll select it, and we see that bibme.org has filled in the various pieces of the citation, and all we have to do is click Create Citation, and we've got an entry that's ready to plug into our reference list right here. Of course, these technologies don't always work perfectly, so you should definitely double check your reference list before submitting it. The JMU Libraries has developed a tool called CheckSite that will help you do this. So let's go to CheckSite. So here we see the check site tool, and you first pick what kind of product you're working on. Let's say we're working on a paper, 
we want our citation to be in APA style, and we're citing an article. This gives us some examples that we can then compare so we're sure that everything that's supposed to be there actually is there. You also can check your citations the good old-fashioned way, which is simply comparing them to what's in Chapter 7 of the APA Publication Manual. If you're conducting a comprehensive research project that involves keeping track of lots of different sources, you might consider using a citation management tool like RefWorks, which will allow you to annotate your sources and even organize them by category. If you want to know more about any of these tools, the JMU librarians are citation technology experts, so go talk to them. Before we wrap up today, I want to point out one more resource that can help you with APA style and more. The University Writing Center has put together a huge bank of online resources, what we call our link library. So from our homepage, www.jmu.edu slash uwc, you can click on the Online Writing Tips and Resources tab. If you want help with APA style, Citation References by Format is the best link to click on. And here we see a bunch of helpful resources, including the Purdue OWL APA Central and JMU's check site, which we've discussed already. But this link library also includes some other resources that might be helpful to you as you're writing an APA style paper. If you want some general tips on research writing, you can get help right here. Or let's say you're confused about this active versus passive voice thing. Here's the place to get help with that. And if you're really struggling to get through all those hard to read journal articles, why not visit our reading strategies? And of course, you're always welcome to visit the Writing Center and talk to a tutor in person. Good luck, and I hope you feel better equipped to use all of the resources that can help you master APA style.